Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Brian and welcome to this week's Bacon and Coffee and we would not be in a great shape if we did not start off with our 30 second countdown. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Bacon and Coffee, and we are going to start out today with our lean and mean pork and caffeine intro. Here we go. All right, I am honored to have, again, one of my faves who comes back at least once a month, the one, the only, the Captain Content, Jeff Herring. <laughs> Jeff, how the heck are you, man? I'm doing great. Another day in paradise. How about you? Uh, I'm fabulous, man. One of the guys I interviewed a couple of weeks ago, his name is Mike Verrett. Um, his, one of his best friends is Captain Obvious, the real guy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. OK. Right. <laughs> yeah. He knew the, the guy got into some kind of car accident and decided to go into acting and ended up getting the captain obvious job. And now he's that for life. You know, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I also it, love your your bacon intro. Every time I hear that, I'm like, bacon. yeah, well, that's the whole point. Pumps you up. You know, I and that's know. A, and it, that's it also a, stays in my mind for a few days. So that's another good point. That's a well, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So anyways, I thought today we're going to be talking about content. We got all kinds of great stuff to talk about. but. Um, and that's why I love is I tried to have this theme. One is sales, one is content. You know, you got to create, you got to create content to create sales. I mean, yeah. it's bottom line is, is, you know, you can, you, if you create good content, it helps generate sales. And we'll talk about that. But I wanted to start off today with some dad jokes because <laughs> you're just notoriously good at dad jokes. So I've got, I've got two for you. So I want you to start. And so you go, I go, you go, I go. Uh, I go, I go, I don't know. I go, I go all day. Something like that. Anyways, you go. <laughs> okay. So, um, what, how does, uh, Lady Gaga like her steak? Uh, all I could think is deep. I don't know. Okay. Raw, 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 raw. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay. Well, this isn't so much of a dad joke, but it's more of a question for you. How do you tell the difference between somebody who's no northern and somebody who's southern? How do you do that? Well, it's the way they say pecan or pecan, right? So northern people say pecan, right? And the southern people say pecan. Is that right? I think it's more pecan down here. Is it more pecan down there? So it's southern. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So southern people say pecan and northern yeah, people yeah. say pecan. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. That's that's helpful because I needed that's kind of a setup joke. So now go with your next one. <laughs> I'm laughing at what Kat just said. Lady Gaga also likes her steaks dressed. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that is right. true. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but Brian, do you know who the only one person in mm -hmm. all the history of entertainment has had a number one song, a number one movie, and a number one TV show? A number one song, a number one movie, a number one TV show. Um, Cher? Good guess. And also another good guess would be like Elvis. Yeah, that's true. Will Smith. Really? Will Smith. Huh. Yeah. Independence Day. And then that, you know, that first, one of those first rap songs. Oh, yeah. Jiggy show. with it, baby. I, I yeah. talked to, yeah. yeah. Jiggy yeah. with it is what I say. That's a matter of fact, that's what I call my accountant. I call him Jiggy with it. There you go. <laughs> so the question becomes, how do you find Will Smith in the snow? Uh, you get jiggy with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's easy. You just look for the fresh prints. Ooh. <laughs> okay. okay. What you got, Brian? Okay. What is a, What does an Amazon driver and a Southern person have in common? Oh, I'm, this is going to bug me when I find out the answer because it's it's out there. I'm sure. What? 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 They both like pecan. 
Oh, nice bringing it back around. <laughs> nice bringing it back around. Thank this you. This one my son told me yesterday. Um, he said, what do eagles and worms have in common? Uh, they both had number one hits. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and then he said, they both fly. Pause, huh? But worms don't. Wait, whoa, whoa. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? They both. The, what do eagles and worms have in common? I don't know. They both fly. Pause. But worms don't. And that's the joke. No, <laughs> that's why I didn't get it. <laughs> I know exactly. Yeah, I mean they both do fly, except one does on a hook. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Ooh, I'll have to tell him that. Uh, Brian says. Yeah. They both fly. And, and a matter of fact, that's what we're going to be talking about today is hooking people with content and reeling them back in, right? I like that. I like that. There see is how, a guy, See how that we flow this together, man? You just, Brian, you're so good. <laughs> There's a radio show in town um, called The Kevin and Taylor Show. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they've since been syndicated. They're, they're all over the country. Um, and they're really, really good. And, and I call up every now and then when they ask for a story about a certain something. And mm -hmm. um, it's fun. But Kevin is the, the absolute king of dad jokes. And I'm just sitting here thinking, how could we get you, me, and Kevin on something like this? Oh, we could do this. If Kevin yeah. ever wants to come on, we can just have a dad joke fest for an hour. I think it'd be fun. Oh, my uh, gosh. <laughs> I will. Okay. Yeah, give and a call. See, see what he's doing on a Saturday morning, and you know, we'll, we'll get him on. We'll just do a dad joke fest. And then the cool thing about it is maybe we can invite people to come in and type in their best dad jokes, and we could tell them on the air. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. One time I was on a uh, call-in show in Tallahassee about your worst moment as a parent so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, And of course, I told the story about getting caught driving in my underwear, trying to get a kid to sleep. Um, but one person called in. This woman had like five kids. Mm -hmm. right? And she fixed their lunch every morning and sent them off to school. Well, one week, one kid was having some intestinal issues, right? Uh -huh. so they, they had to take a stool sample, right? Mm -hmm. And so they did that. And then she, you know, fixed the lunches and sent the kids off to school. Then took the stu stool sample in a brown paper bag, just like all the lunches, to the doctor, right? Okay, and she brought and, a sandwich instead of a stool sample. <laughs> and and the, the, she gave it to the nurse, and the nurse said, well, thank you for lunch, but where is the stool sample? <laughs> He's like, oh no, <laughs> mom! I got a crappy lunch today. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, boy, this went up the deep end fast. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, but that's okay. That's that's what bacon and coffee is about. It's about having fun while talking about content. When talking about all this kind of fun stuff. So if anybody's got any questions, put them in the chat window. Chat window. We'll be able Thank to see you. them. Yes, and um, we'll do our best to get them answered. And so here's where I want to start with you. I'm going to ask you a very deep question, okay? And I'm going to uh -oh. bring you front and center. Here we go. Uh oh. What is the one piece of content that you've written that wowed you in its response and made you the most money? Wow. Um, Good question. For, yes. Fortunately, there's been a lot of those. Well, that's good. Um, I can, I can, I can more easily tell you the components than one certain one. Um, and and one component is a story. Okay. And like one that, that has done really well is um, the day I met Muhammad Ali. Okay. Oh, nice. And you know it helps to have a big name to pull too. Right. Um. And the other component is to do them in chunks, okay? Okay. Because um, in the Muhammad Ali story, I there's I, I pick up on three things I learned from that meeting, okay? Because in that meeting, um, we got to talk for about a minute, okay? A and, minute? Yeah, it was it was amazing, Brian. Because you know how these guys that play sports are huge, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And but you you know that on TV, but when you're standing next to them, you know, and you shake hands with one of them, and you watch your entire hand disappear up to the wrist, right? And you're standing there thinking, what would it be like to be hit by that? Oh man, you know. And <laughs> yeah. anyway, this was a fundraiser for the um, 
the uh, teenage drug hab, drug rehab that I worked for. And he was part of the entourage. And I had no idea he was going to be there. It was just a random meeting. And when he was leaving, he asked, so, so what are you doing here? And I told him I was one of the, um, you know, the group counselors in the drug program. And he goes, he grabs my hand again and he goes, well, go be the best one you can be. And nice. Did, you know, and, and that stuck with me all my life. Um, so something like that. So stories, chunks, and then if you can combine stories with chunks, like three tips, three whatever, mm -hmm. um, with uh, how to, with how to, then you're golden. Okay, you're golden. so say that again so people get it. It's three, okay. three tips. Three tips. Okay. Or three chunks is what I call them. Okay. Um, a story and a how to. So put that in order. A lot of the time, the title can be how to, or here's how to, or you're going to find out how to, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, I've been playing with uh, TikTok lately, and that's a great lead in on TikTok. Here's how you're going to, or here's how to, because um, you got like seconds to hook people, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how to, and then a story. And if you notice, most of my emails, they start off with a story. Right. Um, and my, my poor sons, every now and then we'll be out with a group of people and I'll tell a story and one of them will go, that's a story we've never heard, Dad. Um, <laughs> but people love story. We, I mean, we're, 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 our brains are wired for that. And then if you can lift three points from that story, like that, that incident I had when I um, was pulled over by the cops for speeding with my one-year-old son in the back seat and me driving around at 3 a.m. in T-shirt and underwear. Mm -hmm. um, that's a short version of the story. I turned that into a keynote talk um, down in Tallahassee and pulled three points from it. One was, um, you know, whatever, whatever your intention may be, you're still responsible for the results. Because mm -hmm. okay? my only intention was to get my kid asleep. Okay. But we had greatly different results. Yeah. <laughs> um, the second one was when, when you leave home, you're representing a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, yourself, your family, your whatever. Okay. And then the third one was wear your pants. So, <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> you know, but you can pull from any story, you can pull three points. Mm -hmm. And even if, if you can't, then you can come up with three points. And so one way to play with that is, you know, a segue between the story mm -hmm. and the, um, the points. Okay. And, and that may sound hard now, but do this often and, and you'll get really, really good at it. And you know what you just, you know what you just helped me create? What's that? This is another template. Mm -hmm. How to story and tips. That's an article. That's a, an email that's, hey, cat created right here in front of you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, let's let's do that. So you said you said how to story and tips. Now, you're not doing it necessarily in that order, are you? You're going to do story. You can. you can. I mean, it's close to um, it's close to in order, but you don't have to. You don't have to really. You could tell a story. Yeah, because I, I would think story and then tips and then how to. Well, I was thinking in the how to the title. Got to. OK, but you, oh, could, okay. Do, you could have a how to title and then tell the story. And then the transitional sentences, and here's how to, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Because you know, if you when you get good at both telling stories, this is important. Both telling stories and reading stories. Mm -hmm. A buddy of mine, Andy Andrews, is an author, and in one of his books, one of his famous characters asks somebody, "Do you read?" And the person says, "Yeah, I can read." And he says, "That's not what I asked you." I didn't ask you if you could read. I asked you, do you read? Right. And you know that one of the best ways to get good at what you do is read a lot about what you do. Right. And read a lot about your um, your market. And so, or, But also read a lot about what you don't do, what you need to know that helps you do what you do. Oh, absolutely. One of the best tips I ever got was from a, um, a tanning salon owner. Mm -hmm. Several um, salons out through Ohio and I think either Illinois or Indiana or whatever. And he has a brilliant idea 
for membership sites because people would have memberships at the tanning salon, right? Mm -hmm. and they could come into any one of them across the two states. And sometimes people would need to, you know, go away for the summer or take a time out or, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And so what he did was he came out, came up with a um, retention fee, okay? Let's say their, their monthly was, you know, $49. Mm -hmm. okay? Well, yeah, we'll put you on retention at $5, Okay, so that when you come back, you can get back in for the same rate, even if it's gone up. Mm -hmm. And every one of those five dollars a month, you can apply to merchandise in the store. That's cool. Yeah. And he, he had like, um, you know, a few thousand people on that when we talked 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that's that's nice money at the beginning of the month for doing really nothing, you know. Yeah. Um, and I learned that from a whole different niche than mine. So you're absolutely right. Um, but story and then how to um, and then, you know, whatever kind of tips, because you tips can be so many things. Right. They can be mistakes and what to do instead. Barriers and how to get around them. Mm -hmm. or they can be straight tips. Right. Basic tip, advanced tip, um, beginner's tip, that kind of thing. Mm hmm. Okay. So you didn't. So you didn't finish the whole Muhammad Ali story, or maybe I we went down a, a tangent on that. Or did you finish the story? Well, I, I I told part of it. I didn't tell the whole thing. But I mean, what how, the question that I asked was, what was the biggest uh, outcome? You know, that sold the most. Oh, okay. Um, God, that that's that's also hard because so many of them do that. Which which piece of content sold the most? That you wowed you when you put it out and, and and either sold the most or got the most engagement or got the most people to follow you or whatever it is. I mean, when I say sell, I'm not talking yeah. necessarily you know, about. You no, know, Brian, I may not know the answer to that question. Any single one, mm -hmm. I just know those are the components to the ones that do. Right. I also know, and this is an interesting phenomenon that the things that I think are going to really catch don't. Some, <laughs> yeah, that and sometimes <laughs> bomb, and then the ones that I think, oh, this is. Like when I was writing a, a, an article, a, a column for the newspaper in Tallahassee to build my practice, I was sitting by our community pool one day and I was just observing, you know, like psychology minded people do, um, the way people get into a pool, you know, mm -hmm. some people just dive right in, right? you know, and some people put their foot in and then dive right in. Some people sit on the steps and then get in. Some people walk in slowly mm -hmm. and some people never get in. You know, so I wrote a whole, you know, typology for an article about life. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, I was on deadline and I needed to send it in, but I thought it sucked. And and people went nuts about that. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? You know what? That that story made me think of something. Mm -hmm. I think the one that has had both both the longest impact. The biggest response and made me the most money in several ways mm -hmm. is the article I wrote about the first year of parenthood. Hmm. Um, because I'll, can I tell the story? Yeah, please. Okay. So John was a year old. Okay. And I've been right. He's 26 now. So this is a quarter century old story. Um, gosh, I can't believe I just said that. Um, <laughs> and so I've been writing the column for about a year and I was thinking of a way you know, come up with a hook for talk about the first year of parenting. Well, the hook came one night, um, about 3 a.m. one morning, John started crying and um, it was my turn to go get him. Uh, so I go in there and, and, you know, you know how this goes. Um, yep. First step is you pick him up and rock him. Hopefully, hopefully that'll work. Nah. Um, second step is I took him out to the kitchen and fixed him a warm bottle of milk. No, no good. Mm -hmm. I'm standing there. Ugh, I want to go to sleep. And I remembered that recently, a advice of someone driving him around in the car in his car seat would rock him to sleep. Okay, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, now I'd also heard that putting the car seat on top of the, you know, the dryer and the rhythm, the bouncing, you know, would, would blow him to sleep. But I was always afraid I'd put him in the dryer. So I never did. that. <laughs> um, so I think, okay, we're going to go for our ride or our drive. Well, I was in the great room in t-shirt and underwear. Okay. My wallet and pants, or back in my bedroom or our bedroom. And if I'd learned anything in the first year of parenthood, it was you don't wake a sleeping baby and you never ever wake a sleeping mom. Right. Right. 
So in my 3 a.m. logic, I think no one's going to see us. So he went for the drive. Mm -hmm. um, had worked every single time, probably a dozen times before this. Well, not that night. Um, and so I pull up to a stoplight at one intersection. And when I take off from it, I'm, I'm frustrated. So I'm going faster. And, and John starts to nod off. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, I just need to go faster. Now, some of y'all can see where this is going. <laughs> um, so long about the time I thought I either need to go home or go out to the interstate. Well, uh, guess who else was on Capitol Circle at 3 a.m. in the morning? Officer, Officer Friendly. Bradshaw. Yes, Officer Bradshaw, Officer Friendly, Tallahassee Police Department, T TPD. So the lights go on and I'm getting pulled over and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, please, God, you know, let it be an older cop, maybe even a grandfather that gets this, right? Mm -hmm. and, and two, please don't let it be somebody that recognizes me from the column because I don't want to be recognized right now. <laughs> um, you know, and up walks like 24 year old officer Bradshaw still got acne on his face. I'm like, great, I'm going to jail. Mm -hmm. And, and so the cure for a crying, screaming baby in the back seat is not a big cop flashlight shining in his face. Right. Right. Exactly. Yep. And so the first question was, you know, license and registration. I said, well, officer, my license is, you know, about a mile that way. I'd be glad for you to follow me and show you too late for that. Okay. Now, mind you, he's been a smart cop. We're in a, we're in a white Ultima with darkened windows with a big dent in the, um, the back bumper because my then wife was backing out of the driveway and hit our other car, mm -hmm. uh, which turned into my fault because I'd moved the other car. Of um, course. Well, it's always your fault. Of course. I, I learned that. <laughs> um, and, and we're going back and forth on this street that's got a lot of stores. So it looks like maybe we're casing up the area. You know? Right, right. 3.30 in the morning. And and then came the quest. because And so he was stepped back from the car, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't have his gun, but, you know, it was it was near. You know, he was being careful. And he, he, he then came the question I was dreading. Would you step out of the car, please, sir? <laughs> and I said, I looked down and I said, well, officer, we got another problem. And that's when he stepped up, stepped closer and saw, you know, these two skinny white legs sticking out of a T-shirt. Okay, <laughs> That I'm not making this up, Brian. The T-shirt said I was part of a men's group at our at our church in Tallahassee. Uh huh. And the men's group slogan <laughs> blazed across this T-shirt. Wait a minute. It's, it's hang on a second. OK, I will. Yep. <clears throat> All right, so I'll put mine on until he gets back with this T-shirt. Like, but it's right around the corner in the frame. Okay, yeah. awesome. All right, here it comes. And it says Tallahassee men of integrity. <laughs> you actually had it framed. Yeah, you know it's such a great story, right? Right. So much mileage I had it framed for for times like this, you mm -hmm. know, or, or when I when I do it in public, and and so he goes, "Are you telling me you're not wearing any pants?" I said. Mm -hmm. I said, no, officer, I've got on underwear. I'll be happy to show you. Didn't crack a smile. Okay. Yep. Asked for my name and address, goes back to the car, calls me in, finds out I'm one of the good guys, comes back, tells me all the things he could charge me with, including child endangerment. And this whole time I'm terrified because I'm thinking, what if he tries to take John from me? Right. You know? And he's got a gun and I got no pants. Right. You know? <laughs> and that's an unfair fight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, all he's going to charge me with is, you know, no proof of license and insurance. Mm -hmm. And listen to what his last words were. Okay. He mm -hmm. said, next time, sir, you may want to wear your pants. Of course. Thank you, officer. So I wrote a column about it. Many colleagues called and left a message on my machine or with my secretary saying, tell him that's the best thing he ever wrote. It's finally worth, finally something worthwhile. Thank you. <laughs> um, but the story continues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it, it became either a keynote talk or at least a story at the beginning to get people laughing and, you know, all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I, a, year, a couple of years later, I spoke at a church in town and this woman walks up to me afterwards and says, hi, I'm Officer Bradshaw's mom. <laughs> so you heard the story, huh? Because what happened was when that column came out in the paper, Brian, mm -hmm. weekly column, Bradshaw was out of town. But of course, he told everybody about you know, about it, right? Mm -hmm. And and so his squad mates and partner 
all cut it out of the paper and and like taped multiple copies to his locker when he got back right uh -huh. right so um not long after this happened john got real dehydrated he was sick one weekend and so i i took him up to the er on a sunny night and got him looked at and as we're leaving i've got him on my shoulder and i i looked down these hospital double doors there's two cops on the other side and I'm, i don't pay that much attention but one does a double take mm -hmm. officer bradshaw okay he comes over and, he, and listen to the straight line he gave me okay mm -hmm. sticking out his hand because as stern as he was on the street he's super friendly now he sticks out his hand and says hey i didn't recognize you at first and so what did i have to say you know it's because well, i got I'm wearing feet. pants right yeah exactly <laughs> Okay, so this is a story that kept on growing and growing. And here's the ultimate one, all right? Mm -hmm. Several years later, after I told that story so many times, and I would tell John every time I told it, that I told, you know, I told it. And um, we had a bunch of people over for Thanksgiving and her parents were up and her, her dad had a cousin in Tallahassee, okay? Mm -hmm. So we've got our family, her parents, his cousin and wife and son. And, and her father-in-law says, you know, Jeff, I've heard the story, but I've never heard it. I heard of the story, but I've never heard it. And then John goes, yeah, me too. So I told it. Mm -hmm. Follow this. Okay. My then wife's father's cousin's wife. Okay. I'll do that again. My then wife's father's cousin's wife. Okay. And Officer Bradshaw's mom grew up together and were best friends. Okay. And I said, so you've heard this story before, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, 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 think the, I think the keynote was called Life Lessons Learned in My Underwear. Mm -hmm. um, and anytime I attach it to something, um, it does well. You know, and I've done radio shows and, and, and these kind of things with that story. You know, and so... Part of what's behind that is if you can tell a story mm -hmm. that's in some way, and I've never liked this term, but everybody knows what it means. That's in some way self-deprecating. Yes. You know, that shows you can laugh at yourself. And make sure you add the P and not the F. That's always very important. That That's true. Well, it kind of <laughs> depends though, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. No problem. It was, it was just there. Right, it, it right. Would have been, I would have been felt bad if I didn't grab it. Right. Um, yes, absolutely. I had the P and not the F. Right. So um, all that to say, I think that's the one that's had the most mileage over the years. Yeah. Um, and and that's and it's a great story. And it it, it, it kind of culminates with something. OK, so I've been telling you, I think I think I told you that I bought Masterclass and been listening to. These. Yeah. Yeah. I saw your post about it recently. <laughs> yeah. And I'm continuing to go through them. And, you know, some of them are really good. I mean, listen to Lamar Burton on storytelling. I thought it was good, but it was short and it really didn't have a lot of meat on the bone. OK, so then, you know, it kind of bouncing around. I listened to Robin, uh, Robin Roberts from mm -hmm. ABC. And oh my God, is that awesome. Uh, and one of the things that she says in there, which is the big takeaway from hers, is make your mess your message. And wow. that came from her mom, you know, and um, she talks a lot about that. And, you know, you have to really listen to it. But the key thing is, is make your mess your message. And that's exactly what you did. You know, you made your mess your message. And, that, and by doing that, you're authentic. People can relate to it. People know you're human. And then all of a sudden, no longer comes down as this. You know, I, I think one of the things that I've always overdone over the years, and I remember sitting at a conference and I was somebody asked me, Well, tell me your, you know, tell me about you. And, you know, I started listing off all my accomplishments. I go, No, 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 no. Tell me about you, you know? And it was like, uh, you know, I didn't have anything because I was, I was already programmed to say, you know, I owned a recording studio, I worked here, I did this, I did that, you know, was, I was trying to list my accomplishments to lift myself up to make myself sound like an authority. And people don't care if you sound like an authority, they want you to sound like a human, you know, and I think that's one of the key things about telling your story that's so important, right? Yeah. Are you human? Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of human, cat is hilarious. Because she's made a comment about the T-shirt I just showed you. Yeah. And, and I'll put it up again so you guys understand. She said, um, that tall building is um, well-placed on that T-shirt. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Now, the, the story behind that 
Tallahassee, the Florida State Capitol, mm -hmm. okay, for years were these two domes, okay? For years. And then when they decided to build the new Capitol Cat, they built this tall building in, you know, in between it, right? And, and, and so when my dad and I drove from Orlando, Florida to Tallahassee to find me an apartment in my unair conditioned 67 Mustang in August. Um, in Florida. Paid, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, in Florida, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and in Tallahassee, which is the hottest part of Florida. Is people, it really? Oh, I yeah, did not know that. People don't realize that, but you're just far enough off the coast and there's enough hills where the breeze has stopped. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to actually a, a kid in my, my, my high school small group at church um, yesterday. He's down there now taking a summer um, session for the first time. And he was talking about how hot it was. I said, yeah, they're called 4-H days. Hot, humid, hazy, and 100. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the humidity will often match the temperature in the 90s there. Um, so anyway, when we when my dad and I went looking for an apartment, um, we came in off of I-10, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when I moved there with everything I owned in my 67 Mustang, unair conditioned in August, I came up the back way, okay, which took me up a place called well actually the angle you would see what's on this t-shirt from Appalachian mm -hmm. Parkway and you get close enough and you see this in real life these two domes with this great big tall building in the middle and I'm driving I'm thinking no come on <laughs> what, what you know and so all you need is a fountain on top to complete the look exactly you know? <laughs> I went on top of the big building, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, Kat, good, good noticing. Good that's, noticing. That's funny. I'm glad. I'm glad you're checking Facebook. I, I'm assuming that's where she's putting her yeah, comments. Yeah. 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 Um, and another thing, Brian, along the lines of making your mess mm -hmm. the message. You know my origin story of you know sleeping in a hotel lobby. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and deciding, you know, I was going to get so good at, you know, something with content online that you know i'd never be in that position again and what came of that is a couple of things this is about a year in development at that point i was a partner in a practice building um group or whatever online and once a month we would um ho host somebody you know to do a training mm -hmm. well one month he said well why don't you be the, the guest and talk about your column and how that brings clients said, okay mm -hmm. and so um it was funny because he said, what I want you to do, Jeff, because I've been doing it by then for three or four years, look through all your stuff and see if there's a pattern. And I yep. went, wow, there is. There's, yep. there's a lot of patterns. Those are patterns. And it's funny, Brian, how you learn stuff. You remember easy and articles, right? And, oh, yeah. Uh, and the Big power of that site once. Yeah. And um, I didn't know about that until that teleseminar we did. And a mm -hmm. student on that call told us about it, that you could put your articles there and get traffic. And I thought, I've written like 3000 so far. I'm in heaven. Right. Um, and so um, then later on, um, Tom Antion, my first online mentor, and I sat down and created, you know, the first set of back then they were article writing. Mm -hmm. templates, and I think there were about 11, you know, and they've been through several reiterations um, in 2012. We jumped from 2.0 to 5.0 because I'd been talking about and thinking about upgrading them for like months, mm -hmm. more than 12 months, so at least a year. Um, and we went to see in um, Houston, we went to see just, I wanted to see what it was like when we were traveling through there. We stopped and stayed the night because I wanted to see Joel Osteen speak, right? Because of the phenomenon he was becoming. Oh, yeah. And he um, he spoke about the spirit of excellence. And we went back to our hotel room. And after everybody got asleep, um, I flipped open my laptop and started rebuilding my templates right then. Um, and, you know, that was 5.0. And then Jim Edwards and I turned them into software. And then now I don't know what we're going to call this 20.0 or something. I've completely redone them. And each template has a, a mini workshop video a downloadable template, a downloadable checklist, um, something I call um, the, the genius template in the wild. In other words, you know, links to where people have used them. 
Mm -hmm. the audio that you can, um, you know, listen to like a, like a podcast take with you and then the transcript. Right. And, and, you know, that came all of that. And think about this. The first product was built in 05 or 06. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're now 15, 16 years later and those things are still working for me. Yeah. Okay. And the reason they're working for me is they work for the folks. I mean, they template genius templates are all about taking something hard online and making it mad lib, fill in the blank, simple. Right. So talk about a mess turning into a message. Whew. Yeah. And that's, you know, and it, you're talking about repurposing. I mean, that's one of the biggest things I learned from you at the very beginning was the fact that everything that you create has a life. You know, it doesn't mean it's going to get reused over and over and over again. But, you know, I mean, that that is something, you know, I learned early on, you know, I, I took a bunch of blogs and turned it into a book. But then I never thought about turning a book into a course and turning, you know, book into videos and turning a book into worksheets and, yep. you know, all those other, you know, all that stuff kind of grew upon itself. And I think that's really kind of one of the challenges is that people tend to, you know, I, it's funny. And I don't even know if it's funny. It's, it's a, you know, there was um, a post on a LinkedIn group and somebody said, you know, are you getting any business from LinkedIn? And, you know, so, and I said, yes, I'm getting tons of business from LinkedIn, you know, I'm posting things there. I'm getting a lot of people paying attention to it. And, you know, that's where my audience plays. Yay. And yeah, and it's, it's good. And I, I post content, but the key thing is, is I'm posting the right content for the audience inside of LinkedIn. You know, right. I know, I know what they want. I know what they want to hear my customers. I mean, the, the ones that I work with, the big B2B companies, um, they're getting a lot of traction inside of LinkedIn because all of their customers are there and we're using right. LinkedIn ads very efficiently. It's a beautiful and, thing. Yeah, all of that stuff is working for them. And this other guy comes in and says, no, 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 no. Here's the problem. You don't want to go on that content train, you know, constantly creating content and put content up there. Man, that's waste. You know, I've got this system where I'm going to get you all the leads that you could possibly get. And, you know, that's a very typical thing that people think. You know, it's like, I want leads. No, you don't want leads. You want conversations. Leads Ooh, are... I like that. Say that again. You don't want leads. You want conversations. Wow. That's... Hey, you Me know what? That's the title of your course right there. Well, and, and it pretty much is. I mean, my new course on, on LinkedIn is called Tribe. And you sat through that, you know, the, yeah. the sales piece and you've been to a handful of them. And well, don't, don't say it that way. I didn't sit through it. I enjoyed it. Well, sit thank you. No, <laughs> you did in your, you know, your your seventh grade history class. Well, thank you. For, I mean, I'm glad you enjoyed it. When I said sit through it, you've been a participant, is what I meant. Um, yeah, but the key the key thing is that you know the whole concept of tribe is you've already got everything you need. You know, all you need to do is focus on 150 people who you're already connected with, and just spend time having a conversation with them. You know, and that's really what the whole purpose behind this is. And it's it's most people are so busy chasing the bright, shiny object of I need more leads. I need more leads. And the thing is, is leads are nothing but opportunities for you to see if somebody wants to have a conversation with you. And a lead is something, especially in the B2B space, that takes time. Yeah. So you're yeah. not going to, you know, I mean, you could you would have as much luck getting on a phone, calling somebody up at a business, which people do all the time to me. Hey, I, you know, you don't know me, but you know, we're an accounting firm in Aurora, Illinois. Would you be willing to sit down with us and have a conversation? The answer yeah. is no. Yeah. You know, I already got an accountant I've been working with for 27 years. Yeah. Right out of the yeah. box, the man saved me $30,000 the first year I was with him. He's, yeah. he's my client. You know, he's mine for yeah, life. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it ain't going to happen. And, and it's like, so that's a cold call. You're just hoping you're going to catch somebody at a moment of weakness when their their accountant pissed them off. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere. Business, right? Yeah. But some so, somebody's there, you know, yeah. but but that's what you're doing is you, you might as well just put a dollar in a slot machine and pull it, you know. And so here here are two examples of that playing out. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned earlier I was playing around on TikTok lately and I was watching scrolling through one day and I saw this one um, and, and the woman was on TikTok because her computer connection wasn't doing well. And she usually did this on Twitch, right mm -hmm. now. Um, and, and she does this thing every single weeknight, Brian. And, and she's, she's 
26, looks 15. Um, and she's got like some minor hits in LA. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, a lot of her TikTok videos are her dancing and lip, lip syncing a, a popular song, right? Well, mm -hmm. her Twitches, she goes on and, you know, it's supposed to be a gaming site, right? Right. But, but us marketers or we marketers have an extensive history of taking a site and making it our own. Right. Um, and what she's doing is she goes on, okay, and she collects money through donations, okay? If mm -hmm. you want to hear a certain song, you send five bucks or above, and she'll say, hey, A-L-E-X-A, -E play so-and-so, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and they have, she has a goal every night. The first time I watched it was 650. Okay. And, and if they reach the goal and whoever donated the most mm -hmm. that night, it was get to, gets to decide what she's going to bake. Okay. And the behind her is her kitchen. Mm -hmm. Right. And so a lot of nights she's just, like you said, having conversations with people. Yep. Okay. And and they'll do projects. I mean, I looked the other night, she was building something with a glue gun. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I thought, this is brilliant. Oh, yeah. This is brilliant because instead of sitting around watching three hours of TV every night, she's doing this three hours every night. Right. You know, and I'm like. And you said she made 650 bucks doing that? More. Really? More. Yeah. Yeah. One guy donated like two something. Um, and so, you know, I, I think any of us can use that. Right. Um, another, another example of that, given back to you from what you just said about learning and repurposing from me, I started a, um, I did something this week I've been threatening to do again for months or years. Uh, I know. <laughs> Congratulations. I thank you. And it's much to your influence. I started a podcast. Okay. And the first one I did Monday I spent, it was over by 1230 and I spent the rest of the day repurposing it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any appointments, but I mean, everywhere I could think of, it got put up. Oh yeah. I thought, okay. I got to get this down to a system that I can hand over to somebody because I don't have five hours every afternoon to do this. And I, I haven't done that with all five days this week, mm -hmm. but Brian, I could stop right now. And never do more than five or only do five a month. And I've got more content than I, I could use in a month. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here. I know you've known this for a lot of years, but it's just, it, it stunned me, you know, and, and I'll say to you what I've said to everybody else, you know, that's encouraged me for years to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you tell me about this before? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's because you're so busy doing other stuff. You know, it's like anything else. You have to take something away in order to, you know, put yeah. something new in. And, yeah. um, you know, I mean, one of, okay, so one of the you're hardest. You're absolutely right, because I've kind of traded, you know, weekly webinars for the podcast. Yeah, and that's fine. And, and to be honest with you, it's a good, it's a really good idea. Okay, so even my biggest client, um, they do, they do almost bi-weekly webinars. Okay. But they're, they bringing in different vendors and they come in and the vendors give yeah. a presentation about a product. Right? Right, right. Um, you know how many people show up to watch them? Three. Yeah. That's it. Three. Yeah. We have a mailing list of like 5,000 people and three people show up. You know how many people watch the replays? Probably hundreds. 300. Yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. Because people don't want to be tethered to time. Right. But they're willing, but they'll go find it, they'll look at it, and they'll watch it. You know, I was doing the same thing last night is I was bored, and I just happened to come across an article. This is, you know, this is how it works. Found an article, mentioned something about LinkedIn ads, okay? And so I've been doing LinkedIn ads for a long time. Um, I, I found this. It was from LinkedIn, and it's LinkedIn marketing tips or something like that. But I went in, and they have a certification. And if I get past the certification, I get a cert, you know, certificate. I've been doing LinkedIn ads. I've been working with them. I figured, you know, what the heck? I'll go take the quiz. I took the quiz. I got, you know, um, you're supposed to get seventy five percent, and I think I got sixty percent. So it's like fifteen percent away from certifying. So what did I say? Okay, yeah, 
I want to do this. So then I went down the road of listening to their content. Now I can go take their quiz because I know what their questions, you know, because again, when you take a quiz, you know, there are trick questions in there that you would answer, but they're, you know, they're trying to promote their platform. So they have different answers, you know, so I probably would have got 75. They would have asked just, you know, technical questions rather than, Hey, if you do this, this, and this, you can get better results. You know, it's like, well, I wouldn't do that and that, but I definitely would do that because <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. You know, that this says right. spend more money, spend more money, spend less money, get better results. I'm going with that one. Right? right. Well, they say, Oh no, you have to do all three. So, um, but the key thing is just like, it led me down a rabbit hole, you know, that one piece of content led me down a rabbit hole to another place where I can actually learn something and then go use it for my customers. And if I can walk in and say I'm LinkedIn, LinkedIn ad certified because I took a quiz once and, and missed, you know, 15%, I did listen to their, you know, and I zipped through their stuff. I didn't have to sit here and go through it. I just look for, okay, where are the answers to the questions that I missed? Right. And, you know, within an hour, I, I can go back and take, I haven't taken the quiz yet, but go back and take the quiz pass and get the certificate. And all of a sudden it's like, man, you know, I, I'm going to be LinkedIn ad certified. Who does that mean anything to? Sitting up on stage, they don't care. They, want, they care about your authenticity, right? But I think that the key thing about repurposing content is that you never know where somebody is in the journey and what they want to see. Or which and, one is gonna do it for them. Right, exactly. You don't know where it's gonna hit, where they are. Like for example, if somebody could said to me, you know, if LinkedIn sent me something to say, hey, go get certified on LinkedIn ads, probably never would have went and done it. Yeah. Because I saw this article, chased down the rabbit hole, you know, went bing, bing, bing. It's like, yeah, I'll take the quiz, you know, and just did it. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm engaged in their content. And guess what? LinkedIn's going to make money off me because I'm going to do more LinkedIn ads for people. <laughs> right. You know, and that's how this works. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so th that guy that's so right on. And here's a couple more examples of what we're talking about here, mm -hmm. as well as the limitations we give ourselves by the stories we tell ourselves. Right. In our head. Um, I, several, a couple of years ago, I was doing a Facebook live series called Hiking with Jeff or Tips from the Trail or whatever. I remember that. Remember that? And I, it's just one of those things that was really everybody loved, but I just, I didn't do it one day and that became a lot of days. Mm -hmm. So I thought, all right, let's do this, but let's do it on TikTok. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I've had friends say, well, TikTok is for kids. I'm like, no. And even if it is, I want to, I'm going to be the old white haired guy on TikTok, you know? Yep. Um, and so the first ones I did, there's about 10 of the first ones I did from up on the Appalachian Trail, mm -hmm. right? which is about an hour from here. And, um, and you know, th there is a trail like 10 minutes from here, but it's not something you can really do every day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you could, but you got other stuff to do. Well, I was telling a buddy of mine about this and he said, Jeff, have you looked in your backyard lately? And I went, oh, because it's a fairly big backyard backing up to woods. Right. Okay? Um, and so here's what's funny. Those first 10, they got decent response and reception. And then I started doing them sitting on a wall mm -hmm. in my backyard. And those have blown up, Brian. Hmm. And it's like, so I hiked all the way to my backyard. Um. Now Just it helps. It, it helps sit on a wall. <laughs> sit on a wall. Yeah, and it helps that Buddy and Duke will sometimes run in, into the background and stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I made up that story in my head that I've got to go out on the trail to do this, and what's been better is the mm -hmm. wall, and and inter intermixed in there is these podcasts broken up. Like yeah. the first one I did, I did a three minute because. TikTok now, you can do 15 seconds, 60 seconds, or now you can do three minutes. Oh, you can do three minutes yeah. now. Okay. Yeah, I don't really, play I don't play in that sandbox because yeah. that's not it where my really audience is. The reach and the appeal. And so I, I gave a three-minute tip. My first guest was a woman it's one in my membership. Mm -hmm. And she she I wanted her to share her strategy because back in January, I did a uh, a boot camp about perfectly profitable content. And then made the offer to join Content Creation Nation. And mm -hmm. she really wanted in, but really didn't have it in her budget and didn't want to start and then have to stop, right? Right. So you know what she did? She went to her PayPal mm -hmm. and sc scrolled through finding 
stuff she was paying for monthly that she was no longer using. She joined what I call the cancel culture. Yes, exactly. She started canceling subscriptions she wasn't using. <laughs> yeah. And it, it got up to 20 bucks away, right? Mm -hmm. And she looked and she was in a membership with me at 20 bucks a month. <laughs> so she canceled that. And, and somebody said, aren't you upset about that? I said, no. How often would you trade $20 for $97? All day. Long, as many times as you can. And so I just interviewed her about that mm -hmm. in three minutes. And then the, the second interview was um, Scott Whitaker. He's from Membership Multipliers um, and is really good with membership sites. And boom, three-minute interview. And each one of those are a separate um, TikTok. They're separate articles on um, Medium. Mm -hmm. They're separate videos. Well, not completely yet. On um, on YouTube, they're, they're separate videos on the, the live portion of uh, smartcontentincome.com. And so, I mean, to me, it's amazing. And and here's the other thing. This is why I, I, I tease my friends about, you know, why didn't you tell me about this podcasting stuff? Is after the first one, I remember thinking, I don't know which is more true. I was made for this or this was made for me because it was just, it was so fun and so easy. Mm -hmm. And so um, how would my dad have said it right up my alley? Oh yeah. Um, you know, it's just because, and I think that's true of any content platform. If right. You, if you look through repurposing eyes. Well, and you know, so I've, I've done, you know, I've, I've I've taken all different directions with this. I've recorded the podcast. I've had it transcribed and turned into blog for years. Right. I mean, that's always been the case. Um, that's, uh, you know, so I just do the podcast. I send it to Rev. I get, you know, a transcription. I hand it to somebody. They put it up in a blog post and add some images and I'm done. Um, but then I started thinking about, well, what if I create a PowerPoint around what I want to say? Right. So I always plan these out. You know, I'm always I put them into Evernote. I write out the right. three points in the story. You know, I always want an opening story, like you said, three yeah. points and then a conclusion. I said, well, what if I created a PowerPoint around that and just added a PowerPoint to it? Well, then all I got to do is just sit here and hit the space bar and, and turn it into a video so I could turn it. You know, all of a sudden I said, wait a minute, I could turn my podcast into a video and then the podcast can get into a blog. And now that one piece of content can be three different things. And if there's a good point in it, I could turn that into a what I call a Baconism or what they are is awareness graphics, a simple little graphic that has my point in it. OK, so that all blends together as a system. Would you call I, that an awareness graphic? Yeah, it's called an awareness graphic. And I, I taught like that. that. Well, you, you, that you missed that in the tribe. You need to come. You need to watch episode four of the tribe, my friend, because it covers all of that stuff. Uh, and it's there in, in my membership site. You can log in and watch it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, thank you it's, very much. It's an awareness graphic. And the awareness graphic has a, you know, it, the thing about an awareness graphic has no link except in the text. Somebody would have to go type it in. Okay. You know, but it's not meant to because it, when you add links to things, algorithms tend to beat them up. If you just put a graphic in there that's scroll stopping and it says something that somebody agrees with and they see a link, they might click on it. Next thing you know, they end up at your podcast. They might watch your video. All you know, they go down that rabbit right. hole and eventually you get right. them on your list and stuff like that. But it all works as a system. Right. So I was giving I uh, just to kind of finish this up because we are literally seven minutes away. Can you believe we've been no talking way. for 53 minutes, my man? No way. And I yeah. you know. At one point, I remember thinking, oh, yeah, we have an audience. I thought it was just you and I talking. Right. <laughs> yeah. But so, yes, I, it was Thursday. Um, I was asked by David Perdue to speak to his insider club, NAMS Insiders. And he said the one thing he says, the one thing I remember Brian Basilico about more than anything else in the world. Brian was, you know, he was a helper and he was a speak. He went from being a helper to a speaker to all this other stuff. He says, but the one thing that he will always be remembered for was when he gave his presentation, he had a chef standing in the back room cooking bacon. 
and it wafted to the entire I place remember that. so much that you actually went and ordered bacon <laughs> to bring to your room for your people. Because um, you that's were a speaking. Idea. I'm going to do that. Yeah, it was at the same time I was speaking, and it was just, it was hilarious. Like, good, Jeff Herring's got bacon in his room too now. <laughs> it's like, but it worked, you know, it got everybody's attention, yeah. right? And, um, and, do people in your in your in your community still talk about that? Oh yeah, yeah. Because mine do. Remember that yeah. time you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The, they definitely talk. Well, David brought up, you know, in the middle of this, he just he told yeah. his audience, you know, and, yeah. and again, his audience has had a lot of turnover. You know, he's had some new people in because of the oh, pandemic yeah. and lost some people and stuff like that. But you know, the one thing that I, I talked about in there that I've been talking about for a while, that is an awareness graphic concept, okay? And this, again, is turning your mess into your message. We're going back to that key concept. I said, business is super simple. And I've, I keep modifying and modifying and modifying and growing this, okay? You need to make $3 for every $1 that you spent, okay? $1 to pay yourself first. You always got to pay yourself first because if you don't pay yourself first, you don't have business, right? Second one is to pay your expenses. And then the third one is to invest back into your business so you can do more with it. That's pay brilliant. yourself, pay yourself, pay your bills, invest back into your business. That's so brilliant. if you found a slot machine where you put a dollar in, every time you pull the handle, you got $3 back. How often would you go to that slot machine? They would have Both to- arms would be sore. They would have to drag you away, shut down the casino to make it stop, right? And so once you figure out that methodology, you know, that's really key. But the, the the thing is that you can turn that into an awareness graphic. You can turn that into a podcast episode. You could turn that into a video. You could turn that into something that, you know, again, if you can get people to think about that basic concept, and again, it deals with the number three, right? It's that yeah. number three is the three, perfect three, three. number, All right? Speaking of three, we came up with something at the very beginning that I want to get in here before we close that you were talking about, as you said, you had this um, three something, you had a process that you were teaching your people about yeah. doing content. Yeah, real quickly, it's about follow-up with email because so many people say, well, what do I say? And we've come up with a, a year-long follow-up system. I remember we talked earlier about, again, three chunk templates, right. um, three tips, three mistakes, three barriers or whatever. And you can do a weekly follow-up to people mm -hmm. with, with one article, okay? One week you give tip one, next week tip two, next week tip three, offer. You know, and you called it a sales salsa. One, right. Two, three, it's offer. tip, One, two, tip, three, tip, offer, tip, 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 tip offer. offer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the other thing you said was, you know, you could do that weekly. And I'm like, yeah, you could. I, I wonder if that would be too much, but you could do that. Well, I, not if it's all connected. And it might not be too much. Right. One, if it's all connected. And two, it's, it's a three to one ratio. You're right. teaching three things. And then, oh, by the way, here's how to learn more. Right. And what I, what I would do is I would do tip, 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 summary offer, you know? So in other words, you know, tip, 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 result offer. So the result offer would be that offer, but you're basically saying if you follow, you know, if I covered tip one, tip two, tip three, and you know, now if you want to learn how to make that work, go here, you know? So you're basically doing, you're telling what you told them and then saying, Hey, you could learn more by buying this ebook or you know that. what you also just created or, or triggered for me is that's four articles on Medium every week. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. And I do, well, I do the same thing. I mean, I do podcast, blog, podcast, email, podcast, blog, podcast, email. I do the same thing every single week. You know, that I've been doing that for six years, seven years, you know. Say that again. It's podcast, blog, podcast, email. I okay. do my, I do my monocast. I take my monocast and turn it into a blog and put that up on Tuesday. All right. And then I do my expert interview on Wednesday and then I take all three of those and all my email is, is here's my podcast. Here's my blog. Here's my expert interview. And that goes into an email. And at the very bottom of the email is an offer that says, join my tribe, you know, join, you know, join the next tribe. And it takes them to Dang, the page where they can dude, watch the video. But I've been doing that amazing. forever. Yeah, forever. That's amazing. And one last point along those lines. Mm -hmm. I know we got to wrap up um, after repurposing it all over the place. Monday and almost all that Tuesday, I caught myself on Wednesday putting pressure on myself that I've got to get it in all these places. And I went, no, you don't. No. This is content for later. Yeah. You could use this for the rest of your life. Well, and that's one of the things I'm going to do is I started with a new um, social media person. 
who's helped me work for my clients and, and I've got her started on my step too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach her medium and I'm going to teach her LinkedIn. And I'm going to say, okay, what I want you to do is go back and I want you to look through my articles and I want you to find one, uh, or I could either tell her which one to do, or I could just say, you know, I just want you to go and make a medium article. And I want you to make a LinkedIn article out of these two, whenever, I don't care when you do them. There's no, it doesn't have to be done by a certain day. Just go in and do them when you have time. Right. And, you know, do them both at the same time, one on Medium, one on LinkedIn, one on Medium, one on LinkedIn. So I can, you know, take the same content and use it two different places. And, you know, LinkedIn's easy because you can actually import, you know, pretty much everything in one fell swoop. Our medium, you have to actually give attribution if you want to be in illumination or something like that. But, you, you know, still, uh, it's not that hard. You know, it's not super hard to do. But the key thing is that content's there forever. And, and it could yeah. be old content. You know, it could be five-year-old content, six-year-old content. Most of it's evergreen. You know, unless you're talking about the pandemic, um, you know, right. and being in the middle of the pandemic, you're fine. Right. You know, I love so, it. I absolutely love it. Yep. All right, Jeff, this is your time to shine. Tell everybody about you and how they can get a hold of you and, you know, all that kind of fun stuff and smartcontentincome.com. Well, t to start, I, I, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about what we've just done. and You and I have done a lot of these together. I pretty much think this is the best one. Thank so, you. you. Good job, bud. Um, I'm all about content creation and content profit. Mm -hmm. right? and I break that down into create, repurpose, and profit. Create, repurpose, and profit. You just do that over and over again. And folks, you can learn all about it at a brand new site called smartcontentincome.com, which will take you to the podcast. It'll take you to the live cast. It'll help you get three fresh content ideas and give you access to um, all the genius templates. So pretty good place to go. Thanks. It's a, it's a lot of stuff. And I, as Jeff said, I mean, he's rebuilt it how many times now? 150, 3000 times. Something I mean, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you've got an amazing amount of content to teach people about making content so they could reuse their content to make money content and they can do the content. Yes. And they can do the sales salsa content, content, right. content, sales, content, 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 sales. <laughs> <laughs> and all day you're going to be doing cha-cha all day long, right? <laughs> I'm going to think about you at 11 o'clock Eastern on Monday morning. And you're going to send I, me a text and say, damn you. <laughs> well, I, well, actually, I may invite you in because that's when in the um, in the nation, Content Creation Nation, on Monday mornings at 11, mm -hmm. we, do, we call it Monday morning money-making content creation, M4C2, mm -hmm. where we take a template for something and each person builds it out with my coaching. Yeah. And they're done. And so, you know, I, I will be I will be doing this dance for them. And, and we'll call it we'll call the dance we'll call it sales salsa and we'll yep. call the dance to Brian. Uh that's what we'll call it the bacon. The bacon. Oh, better. Yeah. Better. I like it. The bacon. Yeah. It's the bacon. Yeah. And it sizzles, right? Yeah. It does sizzle. And then you can think of Kevin Bacon and Footloose too, you know, because that's he could they weren't allowed right. to dance, remember? And the whole a whole bunch of things about connection too because you know kevin bacon has been in every movie ever and it's right. connected to this star by so and so and so right and i forget i i forget i think somebody told me at one point that one of the most connected people in the six steps from kevin bacon was ernest borgnine because he did so many different types of characters in so many different movies i think that it was him or somebody obscure but it well, wasn't kevin sense because i remember him from this is a weird association for him instead of um, Mikhail's Navy, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Um, was the movie Willard. Yeah. Yeah. About, about the rats. Right. Right. And then, then he was in the second one called Ben. Right. That, that had the, you know, Michael Jackson singing a love song to a rat. And that right. should have been the first clue. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We've gone, we've gone two minutes over, but it was two minutes well worth it to hear about a love song to a rat. So, <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> hey, again, this is always so much fun. And it, it's amazing how fast it goes because what do we do? We come here, we tell stories, and we create content. That's yep. the one thing I want everybody to understand is this piece right now is live on LinkedIn. It's live on Facebook. It's live on YouTube. I take that YouTube and I bring it over to my website and I turn it into something. And if I want to have this transcribed, I can turn it into a blog. I can turn it into a podcast. I can do the, all this stuff with this and I can just grab tips of it. And so just by being content conscious, you can make your content sing for you. I like that phrase, content conscious. Thank you.
All right, my man. I'm gonna do. I'm. I'm gonna do our last. You know, caffeine and pork uh, shuffle. And here we go. Right. Have a great Thank day, everybody. Thank you. Take care. And here we go.